Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 0, Hello World. Here we'll be discussing how you can switch from the Python to the Rust programming language. Why would you want to even switch from Python to another programming language? Well, you probably don't, because it's a very easy to use language that has already lots of amazing and good libraries out there that will help you with your machine learning, numerical computation, and data processing. However, sometimes if you need to implement an algorithm that does not exist yet in those amazing libraries, you might consider writing it in a low-level language, create a module, and have that then used from Python again. And Rust is a very good uh, language for that because it is uh, easy to use and provides high performance. Um, the reasons why you would run into performance issues could be that your target platform has limited uh, computing power, like an embedded system or a, another slow computer, or you want to use all the resources available to you, as in all cores of your CPU, for example. And with the Python, that's not so easy, because if you use multi-threading, you will be still locked to only one core due to the global interpreter lock. And to use all cores, you would have to write multi-processing uh, software with Python, which uh, then would use all the cores, but you would have to implement much more complicated uh, message passing, and that can be inefficient depending on your algorithm. Um, Rust in general, I find very easy to use, and it has a great ecosystem that goes all the way from documentation generation, um, code formatting, and of course, compiler hints are very uh, easy to understand and you will uh, know immediately what's the problem and how to fix it. Now comparison between those two languages. In uh, Python we have an interpreted language, so there is an interpreter that runs through your source code and uh, runs the code uh, while it uh, is interpreted. And with Rust it is a compiled language, that means it is compiled directly towards the CPU of your system and at compile time, it already knows everything necessary for the code. This is also then going to the typing. Um, strongly and dynamically typed is uh, Python. And this means that uh, while a variable has a type and you want to use it differently, say a string of only numeric digits um, cannot just be used uh, automatically as an integer, you would have to ex explicitly convert it. The same is true in Rust, it's also strongly typed. Um, however, in Python, you can just assign the variables and during the interpretation, the interpreter will make sure it knows what needs to be done. For Rust, it's statically typed, so the compiler has to know at compile time what's the type and how to deal with it. The memory management in Python, it is a garbage collected language. So there's a system that makes sure to track the use of your references and the memory um, use and then cleans up after you when it sees fit and how it does it. In Rust, it is a static memory management that is however done for you by the compiler. So you do not have to manually make sure you know what you're doing like in C or to a certain extent in C++. Therefore, that is fairly easy to use and highly efficient. It normally cleans up after you when a variable goes out of scope, for example. Um, the programming paradigms, uh, mostly supported by Python, is a structured programming, is of course available. Um, Object-oriented and functional uh, is there. In Rust, we have those three as well. Plus, it has very strong support for concurrent programming. And uh, this is then the performance advantage mostly because you get to use multiple cores fairly easily. Error handling in Python is normally done by exceptions, and Rust does, have not, does not have support for exceptions, but um, has a very clever way of uh, bubbling up error messages at return values. Um, Python, <coughs> normally, if you write code, uh, would uh, idiomatically support the duct typing for your object-oriented coding. And it allows for the classical inheritance model, even multiple inheritance. Rust does not support inheritance, but uh, it uses traits. And with this, you can give uh, 
a similar structure to your objects. Python is a much older language. It already started in the end of the 1980s. And uh, the current version 3 is stable since 2008 already. While Rust became stable in 2015 and the current edition is 2018. As a fun fact, there's actually an interpreter written in Rust for the Python language. You can check that out on GitHub, it's called Rust Python. Now let's dive into some code to see the differences in syntax. On the left, we have uh, Python code, the most elaborate Hello World example ever. And on the right, we have uh, Hello World in Rust. So if we were to now look at the first line, here in uh, Python, you can see that you can see the very first line up here uh, is the shebang. That's not really necessary, but since we want to have uh, equivalent uh, code on the left and on the right, this was going to be a binary. So if you want to run it uh, directly from your shell, you want to have the shebang. Then uh, usually you want to document what you're doing. So you have the module documentation string and uh, to only run this when it is actually run as a binary, you want to check that this is the main and not imported from another module. Um, then just to see the difference for a one line comment, I put the, this one here. And the next line is the actual code. So if you only wrote this in Python, you would have your hello world example. Um, this prints out hello world to the world. Now on the right side, we have the Rust code. This does not need a shebang because this will be a binary after compilation. So the first line uh, in this case is empty. To map the same functionality on every line, I kind of try to do this. Um, on the second line, we also have the module documentation. Now the difference here is this is in quotes in Python, as you can see here at the end of the beginning. And here in Rust, a module documentation string would start with two slashes and a bang. And uh, when you run the system that would document your code, this will then uh, generate uh, helpful uh, overview pages. And then below would come your function definitions. Then uh, the main function is needed to compile a binary in Rust. So we define that here on this line. And uh, a one line comment starts with uh, two slashes. And below we have the print line with a bang. That's a macro. So the print line is not a function like it is here in uh, Python. This is actually a macro. And yeah, this would print out the hello world statement. Now, if we were to run this in uh, Python, it's fairly easy. All we have to do is run hello world. And it would show you the output of hello world right there. Uh, at the very top, you can see the versions of software that I'm currently using. And on the right, we cannot just run this. We would have to compile it first. So we run the Rust-C compiler with the Hello World uh, Rust script. Then once this is done, we can run the Hello World thing and it outputs Hello World for us. Now, <clears throat> for some more comparison, in source code, I prepared a more elaborate uh, syntax example in uh, both uh, languages. So here on the left, we can again see on the first line for Python, the shebang and the module doc string on the right, the module doc string was already shown as well. Now we have a new thing. On the left, we define a function that uses uh, type annotations in Python to give a feel of how this would look on both sides. While not uh, necessary and obligatory, those type hints here are fairly useful because your IDE, uh, linter, or some other uh, documentation generation tool, for example, can use those annotations to give you an idea of the expected arguments and the expected uh, return values. And um, here on the right, in the function definition, you see the first difference. So in Rust, this will be fn for function, while in uh, Python, this is used uh, by the def uh, statement. Um, 
then uh, the function name while this will be very similar there's not too much uh, difference actually in the code the other big difference is we use curly braces as you can see here to denote the code block in uh, python that's not the case we use the colon and uh, afterwards we indent the code that we want to have in the code block then the doc string for a function in uh, python is below the function as a string again and in rust it is uh, three slashes that would document the function code then again a one line comment uh, example fairly easy to understand here we have the hash sign and the two slashes would do it in rust the return of uh, the computation here it's a multiplication um, in python is done with the return statement and the expression you want to compute in Rust, you actually can write the last expression just like that, and it will be automatically a return value. This is very practical for closures and uh, pattern matching. So this is the idiomatic form of doing this. If you wanted to, you can, of course, still... <coughs> If you wanted to you can of course still write the return statement here so if you were to write uh, this code this would be valid rust however it's not idiomatic so this is why it's not in the example and below we have a multi-line comment so you can see here that the multi-line comment start with slash and star this is very similar to how this is working in SQL, for example, C, C++, and other languages. Multi-line comments in Python have the multiple quote signs, the three starting and ending the block. The end of the block here is a star slash, and then you have the multi-line comment uh, finished. Then again, we have the main function block. Here we assign the variable said to have the result of your multiple multiply uh, function and here the said uses the same the big difference between those two uh, lines is here we have the let statement and at the end uh, the semicolon for ending the line and this is not needed in python however it is very easy to use because you do not have to tell the compiler the type of this uh, variable because the compiler can infer it. The definition up here tells the compiler that this will be an i64. That's an signed integer with 64 bits. So if it runs into this code down here, it understands, oh, I would have to set uh, said to be an i64. Now, if the maintainer of the library of the mul multiply function decides to change the return type to another uh, integer type for example or float maybe and you don't have to change your code so this is very practical um, because the compiler will then infer it from the new version of your library below we printed the result in uh, python with the, the string formatting right here um, this means those curly braces get replaced by the value of the variable said and uh, below we have the example of python 3.6 and higher where we use formatting strings so that's an f with a quote and then you have your string and in the curly braces you can then put an expression that then will be part become part of the string and below we print uh, this one to have a similar code in rust on the right i can create a new variable with let to have the text assigned and to do the same as a format string in Python, we would use the format macro to use uh, the formatting string. And uh, here we can do the same. The reason that this looks very similar is both Python and Rust use the FMT library to format the strings. So that's why it's very similar and easy to use for existing Python programmers. The big difference below here is uh, print directly accepts uh, any string or any object uh, to be printed out. This is not the case in Rust. In Rust, you have to provide a formatting string to the uh, print line macro, and then the as arguments the variables that you wanna have printed.
Now, in order to run this, <clears throat> we can buy opening uh, the Rust compiler. We do Rust C syntax RS. Oh, we should actually use syntax. So this is compiled now, and if we run it, we see twice the output of uh, result is uh, 30. So that matches with our expectation. No, five times six is uh, 30. We have the result formatting string that wants to print it here, and this is just a more complicated version of doing this. Um, if we are now switching to The Python window, we can run this uh, in Python directly, and uh, we see the same result. Twice the line says result 30, and this concludes the first uh, syntax introduction into Python. The next episode will be about variables and numbers. Thanks a lot for watching.